a camel went into labor. There was a heavy rain and so much thunder and lightning. The thunder and lightning was so intense that everyone became scared. But a camel knew that everything was going to be okay. Once upon a time, in the village of Omokiri, there was a woman named Ekema. She was a kind and gentle woman, but she was also a very sad woman. Ekema was married to Mr. Nandi. They have been married for 15 years, but they have never been able to have children. This made Ekema very unhappy. The villagers mocked her every time she passed. One woman even called her a witch. Ikima could hear all this and pretend like she didn't because she's a very peaceful woman. She was an object of mockery in the whole village. She was not allowed to be in the Umada meeting, nor was she allowed to be in women's august meeting. She was always watching from afar when such events happened. One day, there was an Umada meeting happening in the village square. Ekema, who had always been so anxious to know what the meeting was all about and how it was done, decided to attend the meeting that very day. But as she stepped in among the women, she saw a group of women laughing at her. The first woman said to her, What are you doing here, witch? You don't belong here. Please, this is a gathering for women, not men. Please leave us. Men are not... They called her a man and mocked her. Ekema was hurt by their words, but she didn't say anything. She just turned and walked away. As she walked home, she thought about what has happened. Ekema went home with tears on her face. She couldn't stop weeping. Her husband, Nnamdi, tried to comfort her, but she couldn't stop crying. Nandi said to her, I am sorry, Ikema. I wish I could give you children. Ikema replied to him, It is not your fault. I am just so tired of being mocked. Why is my own soul different? Why do I have to go through all this humiliation? God, why has you forsaken me? She was so sad that she continued crying bitterly. This made Ikema stay indoors. She hardly leaves home. Each time she leaves home, she could receive insult from other women, so she hardly went out. But one day, there was no food in the house. Ekema decided to go to the market to pick some foodstuffs to prepare lunch for her husband, who could be back for work soon. When she got to the market, she was about to walk past the stores when she saw a woman selling herbs. The woman called out to Ikema and told her that she had special herbs that could help her have children. Ikema didn't believe her at first, but she was also desperate. She bought the herb and took it home. Ikema drank the herbs before going to bed. That night, Ikema had a dream. In her dream, she saw a woman coming towards her carrying a baby. The woman said to her, My daughter, you have been remembered. Your prayers have been heard. You will soon be a mother. Very, very soon. Do not cry. Ikema woke up, feeling very hopeful. She took the herbs again the next day and the day after that. A few weeks later, Ikema discovered that she was pregnant. She was so happy that she couldn't believe it. She told Nandi the good news and he was overjoyed. After eight months, it was almost time for Ikema to give birth. But the night before she was meant to give birth, she had another dream. In her dream, she saw the same old woman she had seen before in her dream. The woman said to her, By the whole night, by the whole night, you will give birth to a baby girl. She will be a very special child. Everyone will be envious of her. She will do things that no one has ever done in any curious image. But he was never caught her dream. Ekema woke up so excited. After some time, 
she became curious about why she was asked never to cut her daughter's hair. But she didn't take it seriously and she went on with her daily duties. That evening, a kema went into labor. There was a heavy rain and so much thunder and lightning. The thunder and lightning was so intense that everyone became scared. But a kema knew that everything was going to be okay. She had a special child inside of her and she was going to do great things. A kema, after going through a lot of complications, finally she gave birth to a beautiful light skinned baby girl. Baby girl. She and her husband named her Irima. The villagers were amazed. They have never seen anything like this before. They stopped mocking Ekema and started to praise and congratulate her. But some villagers were spreading rumors about what happened the previous night. Some said that the strong lightning and the heavy downfall were a result of Ekema's daughter and that it was a sign of bad luck. Ekema ignored the rumor and focused on raising her daughter. Irima grew up to be a beautiful and intelligent young woman. She was so beautiful that her peers were jealous of her beauty. She was also very kind and compassionate. Ikima was so proud of her beautiful daughter Irima. However, she didn't know that Irima was born with spiritual powers. One day, Ikima caught her daughter talking and laughing in her room. She was so surprised that she asked her, Who are you talking to? Erima replied, I am talking to my friends. Ekema was shocked. She asked, Who are your friends? Erima pointed to the wall. Ekema looked around the house, but she saw no one. Ekema became so scared. She remembered the dream she had the night before she gave birth to Erima. By the whole night, you will give birth to a baby girl. She will be a very special child. Everyone will be envious of her. She will do things that no one has ever done in any pilgrimage. But you must never put her there. She was very worried. She decided to get to the roots of the problem. She embarked on a journey to visit the village chief priest. When she got there, she told the chief priest about the strange behavior her daughter had exhibited earlier. The chief priest told her, Don't worry, Kimma. Your daughter is a gifted child. She has been blessed with spiritual powers and can communicate with people from the spiritual realm. Your daughter is not an ordinary child. She is the daughter of the gods. She possesses spiritual powers to redeem the village. So go home. Don't be scared. She is harmless. Ekema left disappointed, still not convinced by what the chief priest told her. When Ekema got home, she saw different kinds of gifts in front of her doorstep. She saw full stuff, gold, and different kinds of gifts inside each basket. She was so surprised and she asked them, Who brought these things here? And they told her it was a token of appreciation for the deeds of her dear daughter Erima. Her daughter has been going around healing people in the village. Ekema was amazed. She has no idea that her daughter was capable of such things. Ekema was very happy, but she was also worried. She knew that the people in the village were not nice people, and she was afraid that they might turn against a woman for her good deeds. She decided that she needs to find a way to protect her daughter. When a woman got back home, her mother tried to stop her from healing people. But Erima insisted that she had to continue because it was her destiny. Ikema was disappointed, but she knew that she could not stop her daughter. By that time, there was rumor going around the village about Erima and her strange healing power. One morning, when Ikema, Erima's mother, was going to the market, she had people saying, that Erima was a witch who was killing people after healing them. She was horrified. Ikema was not happy. She spoke to her husband, Mr. Nnamdi, about it, but he told her to let her daughter be. 
Ikema was not satisfied with the reply he received from her husband. So she decided to carry out a very dangerous and sinister plan. She said to herself, I will wait for Irima to fall asleep. Then I'll cut her hair. Maybe cutting her hair will make her lose her spiritual gifts and powers. She smiled. When Irima went to bed that night, Ikema snuck into her room and began to cut Irima's hair. After cutting her hair, she pretended to be sleeping with Erima and she was so happy. She smiled and went back to her room. The next morning, Ikima woke up but couldn't find or see her daughter anywhere. Unlike before, her daughter always woke up before her. She was wondering, where could Erima have come this morning? It's still early to go out. She continued with what she was doing. After two hours, she still didn't see her daughter. She decided to go to Irima's room to see if she was there. To her surprise, she saw Irima lying on the bed, lifeless. At first, she thought she was still sleeping. She tried to wake her up, but she wasn't moving. Then Irima remembered warning she had received earlier from the strange woman in her dream. But he was never caught her dream. She realized that something has gone wrong. She kept the secret from her husband, who was away from home. She dressed up immediately and set out on a journey to visit the village chief priest. When she got there, she begged the chief priest for help. Help me. My child is dying. My daughter is on the verge of death. I cut her hair, but it wasn't my intention to kill her. I only wanted to stop her healing powers. I was only trying to protect her from the villagers. Please do something. Help me. I need my daughter alive. Chief priest replied to her. What happened, young woman? The only way to bring your daughter back to life is to sacrifice the goat and some food items. Carry them to the Ijayu River by 12 p.m. sharp. Drop them there and call upon the goddess to accept your sacrifice. Ekima hurriedly left and prepared the items. She then began her journey to the Ijayu River, carrying along with her seven goats and baskets filled with food items. When she got to there, she started pleading with the goddess to let her child come back to life. She said, Oh, goddess of Ijayu River, I beg you to have mercy on me and release my only daughter. She is all I have. Please have mercy and let her come back to me. Let her live. Just then, a powerful breeze blew and a creepy looking woman like a mummy water emerged from the water, laughing loudly. It is very really unfortunate that you did not listen to my instruction. I gave you a simple instruction to never cut your daughter's hair, but out of your selfish heart, you killed her. Now you come here to plead for mercy? I will not accept your sacrifice. I seek one thing to get your daughter back to you. What can I offer you? I seek your sanity. In exchange for your daughter's life, I will take your sanity. Ikema was silent for a moment. She knew that she had to make a choice. She could either give up her sanity and have her daughter back or she could keep her sanity and lose her daughter forever. In the end, Ikema chose her daughter. She agreed to give up her sanity in exchange for a woman's life. Your daughter will release, but she will never be the same again. Ikema watched as the goddess disappeared back into the river she knew that she has made the right decision even though it meant that she could never be the same again she never forgets the price she has to pay for her daughter's life <laughs>